electrolysis. We've talked about Voltex cells. That's a spontaneous process. Today we're going to talk about the non-spontaneous process of electrolysis. Instead of making the spontaneous process occur, what we're going to do is put energy in and make the non-spontaneous or the reverse process occur. For all these, the delta G will be negative and energy will be, need to be applied to make the process or reaction occur. So electrolysis is when you force a current through a cell to produce a chemical change for which the cell potential is negative. The purpose, now why do you do this? Well, we know we have voltaic cells because we get energy out of those. What is the purpose of using electrolysis? Well, it's actually for what we get from the reaction. Here are the few things we get from the reaction. One, it's a way to charge a battery. Two, we can make metals, pure metals from that. For example, aluminum is one of those. You can make pure aluminum through the process of electrolysis. And third, the final thing is you can plate a metal. You can use a process of electrolysis to make a metal be plated on top of another metal. So let's, an easy way to start with electrolysis is to talk about how it works in a molten cell. Now, I'm sure you may not remember what a molten means. Molten means for a chemist, an ionic compound that's in a liquid state. So for example, we're going to look at a molten cell consisting of molten sodium chloride. Now, molten sodium chloride is very hot because it's at the liquid state. When you have molten sodium chloride, you have molten or sodium ions are liquid, and you have chloride ions are liquid. Now, what's nice about this is there's only two things present. There's sodium ions and there's chloride ions. So there's really only one thing that could be reduced or gain electrons. Let's see if you could think about would it be the sodium ion or the chloride ion. Hopefully you'd pick the sodium because it's positive and it's easy for sodium get to gain electrons. Chloride, on the other, other hand, is negative, and it can easily give up an electron. So the, the two processes that, that can occur are the cathode, you could have the reduction. Remember, that's how we remember cathode. It's two constants. Cathode and reduction are both, reduction is an R, and those are both constants. So at cathode, we gain GER, gain an electron. At the anode, remember, that's a valve, just like the, the O in oxidation, you lose an electron. And then you have this overall process here at the bottom where you have two sodium ions plus two chloride ions give you pure sodium, this is one way to get sodium solid, and pure chlorine gas, which is poisonous, so we're going to be careful not to be close, too close to that. So that's how you look at the electrolysis of a molten cell. And these are the values, and this would be the amount of energy that would need to be applied. So each, you need to sum those two values up together. Now notice, once again, you have a negative E cell. Let's talk about electrolysis in aqueous solutions. This is more common, and this is something we'll do in the lab. You don't need these high temperatures like you need for a molten solution. What are the products, for example, if you were to add energy or do electrolysis with a sodium chloride solution? Now, for this, the first thing you're going to do is recognize what are the major species when you have a so solution of sodium chloride. How many major species do you think there are? Hopefully you realize there's three. There's sodium ions, there's chloride ions, and then there's water. So instead of just sodium and chlorine, we have water now to be concerned about. So the, those are the major species that we have. What you want to do for each of these, there's something that can be reduced and something that can be oxidized. Now let's first talk about what can be reduced. One thing that can be reduced, and one thing you might want to do is look at your reduction table, because this is what we're going to, going to use extensively as we try to answer these questions. Water can be reduced just like sodium ions. Now the reduction of water, if you can find that on your table, is when water is reduced, you produce hydrogen gas. That's really important that you remember that. When water is reduced, you re produce hydrogen gas. When not, and also, he said sodium was in there, so sodium could be reduced as well. Now, notice when sodium is reduced, it takes a lot more energy. So if you have an aqueous solution of sodium chloride, unlike molten sodium chloride, what's going to happen? Only one of these two processes is going to occur. Generally, what almost always happens with one exception, we'll talk about that next, is you always pick the most positive value. You see the most positive value here would be the, that for water. That's a negative 0.83 as opposed to that for sodium, which is a negative 2.71. That means of these two processes, the one that would occur or the reduction that would occur would be the reduction of water. Sodium would not be reduced because the negative 0.83 is much more positive or much less negative than in the negative 2.71. That would be when you have sodium versus water. Now let's talk about the oxidation. Now there's two things that can be oxidized. One thing that can be oxidized, we said, was chlorine. 
And notice that these are on the opposite value because when we're oxidizing, we're talking about the reverse process occurring. And also, we're going to make that E is going to become negative instead of positive because this is a reduction table. The other thing that can occur is not only chloride ions losing electrons, but also water can lose electrons. When the water's oxidized, now this is one thing to remember, it produces oxygen. Remember we said when water is reduced, it redu produces hydrogen. When water is oxidized, it produces oxygen. Now when you write these reactions in reverse, we have to remember these two values are negative. So we have a negative 1.36 and, and a negative 1.23 volts. We would almost always expect the most positive value to occur. But notice how close together these numbers are. So if we just looked at the numbers alone, and the rules we talked about, we would expect that this would be the process, that water would be oxidized. This is the one time this is going to be an exception. The one that actually occurs is this process for chlorine. So this is one that occurs. Now, we know that this is one situation that doesn't make sense because that's a less negative number. This is because of something called overvoltage. These two numbers are so close, we didn't pick two values that are really far apart on the table. They're very close together. And usually these are going to be a little bit more voltage. So what's going to happen instead of water being oxidized in this one situation, you're going to have chlorine being oxidized. One reason I point this out is because we don't want to uh, do the electrolysis of sodium chloride in the room because we don't want to produce chlorine gas. So even though we would expect that water or oxygen should be produced, this would actually produce chlorine gas. And we don't want to produce a poisonous gas in our classroom. So I would encourage everyone never to uh, try this process at home or anywhere else because you don't want to produce chlorine gas. So let's look at this a little bit closely. This is a process for the reduction. And then the process for the ox oxidation is written below. Now, one thing that we didn't do here is they wrote these as reductions instead of oxidations. And so both these are really negative values if we were to combine them. And so the oxidation would be, the reduction would be either water or sodium being reduced. The oxidation would be either for, for water or chloride ion being oxidized. And for those, remember we picked the water, this because it is a more positive. And for the oxidation, we picked chlorine. Now remember, that is not the most positive or the least negative of these two numbers, but we picked it this time because of this exception called overvoltage. Let's do one more example. Let's talk about, in the general rule, is a more positive or the less negative the value for the E reduction, the more favorable the, react, uh, the reduction. Now, if you're doing the oxidation, you'd have to write that in reverse and change that sign to negative. And you still pick the more, more positive or the less negative value. So the overall reaction that occurs when you add an electric current to a sodium chloride cell is the one that's listed below. And those are the voltages. And this is a minimum amount of voltage that you need to put in order for this process to occur. Let's do one more example. In the electrolysis of an aqueous solution of sodium sulfate, which a reaction would occur at the anode and at the cathode, assume you have major uh, standard conditions. One of the major species, you should start by saying sodium, sulfate, and water. Well, the sodium one we already discussed. Remember, sodium is, is going to be reduction. It's the one where you're gaining electrons, and you have these two at the bottom. And for that, we notice that the one for water is much less negative or more positive. And for that reason, we know the first reaction would occur, and sodium would, in fact, so I'm just going to draw a line through this, sodium would not, in fact, be reduced because that is a larger number. So water would be reduced at the cathode. At the anode, it's a quite a different story. In an anode, we have the reverse process. And we know this is a reduction table, so we want to immediately make both these values negative because you want to write both of these as oxidation. So when we put the negative sign there, that makes an oxidation. So with the negative sign there and those as oxidations, it's going to be the reverse process. And we still want to pick the most positive value of the two. Now the most or the least negative. Now for that one, that would once again be water. So if this uh, if this were to be uh, the solution that is electrolyzed or which you had a current to, water would be oxidized, produce oxygen because it is a least positive or the most negative, as a written as an oxidation. And water would also be reduced to produce hydrogen because it is a least positive or or the, I'm sorry, the least negative or the more positive of the two values. 
So those are examples, and we're going to do a lot of these in class and also lab with it on Thursday. Uh, we'll get some practice. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.